This house has just been insulated and it's been insulated with a blown fiberglass product. Uh, the blown fiberglass product in a 2x6 wall is about an R23 depending on the density. And so there's a new section in the 2021 IECC in, in Chapter 3 that talks about the insulator having to certify their install. Because there is no R value mark on this material, the insulator has to leave a certificate immediately after the install that certifies what the R value of this material is. Because I can't look at it and tell you it's an R23. I can make that assumption, but again, it's very dependent on the density of the blown of the insulation. Now, blown fiberglass is a great material to ins insulate with because it completely encloses any obstruction in the building cavity, like a, a wire or electrical box or plumbing or gas pipes or any of those types of things. You can install the insulation and it will completely enclose that obstruction that's in the cavity. So you're going to get a better insulated cavity, a truer R value, and it's going to perform and perform well. We'll show you a picture of some other insulation, a bat insulation that's been installed that hasn't been split around the wire and obstruction. You can see the difference between the two here in just a second. We saw before how insulation can fully fill the cavity and completely enclose any obstruction in that cavity. Uh, in this wall, we have a different type of insulation. In this wall, the insulation needs to be physically split by hand around the obstructions in the cavity. And you can see that the wiring in this cavity is actually compressing this bat. And therefore, this bat is not re reaching its rated R value, and therefore, it's not meeting the intent of the code. Uh, so we need to actually split the bat evenly around the obstruction in the cavity, um, around and fit it around the electrical box, and this box should also be air sealed in the back here uh, where the wires go into the box. And after drywall, this box should be air sealed to the drywall that it's penetrating through in order to meet the intent of code. So we're looking at insulation installation. We're looking at it being installed properly to fill the cavity from front to back from side to side and top to bottom with very, very limited gaps, voids, or compression. And then the box either needs to be hand air sealed or you're also allowed to use a manufactured airtight box uh, in, in your houses as well. And those manufactured airtight boxes would have a flange around here that air seals the drywall to the box on a gasket there. Uh, you might also be able to seal your vapor retarder to it as well, uh, but they're airtight, so this penetration, this wire penetration into the box is a sealed opening that's manufactured into the box. In this case, they actually have to air seal it themselves. Over here, um, they've already done that. So I'm going to show you an example in a wall that hasn't been insulated because it's not a true exterior wall, but this is the concept that we're looking for here we see that the box itself has been air sealed with this foam where the wire is coming through uh, the box itself and then where the wire is going into the building envelope component of the wall, it's been air sealed as well. All of those things need to happen here. Now, best practices would be one wire per hole uh, because you can, you can see here that there's a little gap here where it's not air sealed well. And you know, as we're starting to build our houses tighter and tighter to get more control and predictability of airflow, moisture flow, and thermal flow, those little holes actually make a difference here. And then the last thing, remember that this box needs to be sealed to the drywall that is penetrating. And that should be in the builder's scope of work, pri probably for the painter uh, at that case when they're doing the other uh, caulking that they're doing at the drywall level before they paint.